brother. What is good, my people? We are live back again with another episode of the Forecast Back. On this Tuesday, allegiance to the hotness Tuesday, as we do every single Tuesday. We always got to pay tribute to some of the hot music that has been put out. I get tired of hearing the same old thing on the radio, so... You know, I just got to do it for me to keep, you know, the spirit alive. And you can go to the forecast, check it all out, and go there to be a part of the conversation. And tonight, another terrible story. This shit comes one after another. Now, earlier I seen a story of unprecedented. I didn't even, even know this was possible. Where a black man... Went to trial, was charged with um, armed robbery, and he is found not guilty, but the judge still suspend, um, still sentenced him to, like, what, 2022 or something like that? He gonna be in jail? After he was found not guilty. And, you know, before I speak on it, let's just listen to the story and see what happened. Is it a case of justice served or justice denied? In school, we're all taught that a person is innocent until proven guilty. But investigator Rebecca Lindstrom shows us that in Georgia, that burden of proof isn't the same for everyone. The Lucky Lotto on Shorter Avenue in Rome is now closed. It's surrounded by weeds, almost frozen in time. No one ever won big here. But lives were certainly changed. And I would not like to trade places with her. On July 9, 2014, a convenience store clerk stood terrified as a robber held a gun to her head. The store surveillance video is grainy, almost useless. Police say the store was so dirty they couldn't take fingerprints. And according to the police report, the only description offered by the four witnesses inside was a black male dressed in dark clothing who may live nearby. I think what bothers me the most about this and what would bother most people about this is when people tell stories over and over again, they're supposed to remain consistent. But the clerk's story didn't remain consistent. A few months after the robbery, the clerk saw a picture of Ramad Chapman on Facebook. She told police that was the man. In her testimony, she said, it triggered something in me and it just made me freak out. Ramad turned to a selfie. Why? Because he did not want the police looking for him. He felt he had nothing to hide. Right. Janice Chapman thought within hours her grandson would return home. Three years later, she is still waiting. He always said he was not guilty. He was very upset. In court, the clerk testified she remembered the tattoo under his eye vividly, but she couldn't remember any of the other tattoos on his face, sore, even neck, hands, and arms. According to court transcripts, each time she testified, she changed the description of the gun and his clothes. He shouldn't be in prison. He should not be in prison. Prison is full of people who claim to be innocent. But in this case, a jury actually agreed. At trial, Ramad Chapman was found not guilty of aggravated assault, not guilty of armed robbery. But he had more than a jury to convince. When Chapman was arrested for robbery, he was already on probation, sentenced as a first offender for breaking into an apartment to steal a TV. Chapman's grandmother says for two years he did everything asked of him to earn the right to have his conviction erased from his record. He made sure that he did right on his probation. He never violated it. But Judge John Niedrach disagreed. While the jury didn't find the clerk's testimony credible, he did. While well, a jury must convict beyond a reasonable doubt, a judge in a probation revocation hearing only has to be convinced it's likely. And now he's in prison until 2022. In prison until 2022 after sitting through a jury trial and watching 12 members of his community tell him he did not commit that crime. With his probation revoked, Chapman had to go to prison for the original crime. The felony conviction will follow him forever. It is a 10 year sentence for $120 TV. The Rebecca DA, Lindstrom, 11 Alive Investigators. 
The DA's office could have also withdrawn the request to have Chapman's probation revoked, but it felt the differences in the clerk's testimony, they were minor. Had he not been arrested for the robbery, Chatham would have finished his probation this July. All right, so it's saying he would have been out of probation in July for a crime he committed a long time ago. And now he's saying they don't have to convince him a jury. Now you've got to convince the judge that it's not likely. And he said, well, it was minor differences. And we can go through this all day because, of course, all the trolls going to come up and say, well, why are you race baiting? Why are you talking about race? Well, let's solve that right now. Don't say that shit unless you can come with documented evidence that this shit has ever happened to a goddamn white person where they've been found not guilty and still get sentenced. Because I can pull up a case after case where white men have been found guilty and not sentenced or their sentence isn't even a day in jail. Get this, a black man found not guilty doing more time than some white kids who are assaulted and raped and stuck coat hangers up a mentally disabled child's ass in school while making them sing racist songs. Found guilty and he does less time than someone a black man found not guilty. And, you know, you can keep saying that I don't see race and black people as the race thing all day. It doesn't matter what you say. Because at this point, I'm talking to my brothers and my sisters because we can obviously see what's going on here. They can call it race baiting or whatever, but until we get on the same goddamn page and start making moves, God damn it, we're going to keep talking about the same thing, having the same conversations over and over. Now, if y'all want to stay like this, that's one thing. But if we want to do something, here's another example of where if we had a judge and making sure... Our people go through our own systems as much as we can. This would lessen the opportunity for stuff like that. Not saying that we aren't under attack from these people, but at some point we got to defend ourselves. Right? Because we built things in the past. We keep saying, well, we haven't done anything. Black people can't do this. Black people can't do that. We, we've done all of the things that we say we need to do. We have done them in the past and they were systematically attacked and destroyed. Why? Because we could not defend ourselves. And that is one of the first things that we got to start doing. And it feel like it's beating a dead horse, but the motherfucking horse is still alive. You got to keep beating the motherfucker. Because apparently we aren't getting it and we keep banging our heads against the wall and expecting different results. It's insanity. We should not be surprised. And the fact that this could happen to any one of us at any time should give us what we need to be on the same page. And I want to say this too because they will give you the impression that black people aren't on the same page as much as we are. Because we really are. It's just simple things on the surface that keep us divided. Like, simple things like just what we call ourselves, or maybe even religion. But it doesn't matter what we call ourselves, what our religion is, what we say, what we do. The results are the same. Over hundreds of years, we should know that shit by now. But the problem is, like I always say, we don't have each other's back. Like the Judge Olu Stevens, we should have had his fucking back. When he said, no, we're not going to have an all-white jury here. We're going to have a fair trial here. And they kicked his ass out. Here, we got a black man with a fair trial. When the people said not guilty, the judge said, well, the jury may have said, of his peers may have said, well, he's not guilty and the story doesn't add up. But it's close enough for me to put his ass in jail and give him a felony that's going to last with him for a lifetime. 
right? But you have a white kid who can rape a little fucking baby. And they feel sorry for him. A 23-year-old white male, not famous, not rich, none of that shit, who can rape a little kid, an 8-year-old boy, and the judge feels sorry for him. And all they have to do is sign up as sex offenders. And we can go into the war on drugs all day. We can go into the stop and frisk thing that they're going to try to get popping. These people are making a move and we sitting here arguing with them over semantics. They know what the hell is going on because they're fucking doing it. But we just sitting here arguing over what we all know to be the fucking truth. No, we need to stop wasting our time doing that and start getting on the same page by educating ourselves, educating our children, by focusing on growing ourselves economically so we can build our own school, so we don't have to support or depend on these people to support ourselves and to eat and feed our children and to grow businesses where we can go get groceries if we need to. Healthy food, all of that stuff. Or we can be in control of our own resources, where we are running our own districts, being district representatives, mayor, governor. Right? That stuff has a bigger impact than the president. Because you're controlling your local laws and your local tax money. And who is in charge of the police in your area? And what goes on in the courts and who has to be accountable for what? And at the end of the day, whatever we build, we have to be ready to defend it. Or else it's going to be this perpetual cycle. That's going to take hundreds of years to get past. And that's even if we manage to heal ourselves. But, you know, I want to hear what you got to say about this case. I've never heard of such abominations going on here. I, I've never heard of no case like this before where a man is found innocent and still convicted. They still violate him on his probation. Even though he ain't do nothing, got a job, all of that stuff. It didn't matter. But, you know, I want to hear what you got to say. You can go to the forecast. Do you agree with this? Do you disagree with it? Are you fed up? What have you got to say? No, you don't get justice in court. A black man can't get justice in court. A black man can't get justice in the court system of America. And I'm telling you, the only way you get justice is in the street. The only way you get justice is in the sidewalk. The only way you get justice is when you make justice for yourself. You never will get justice in the white man's court. No, not me. I never want him to take me to court. I saw what he did with my brothers. I see what he has done with them right here in New York City. So make sure you obey the law. Make sure you never commit a crime. Make sure you never de deviate from the law. But any time one of them puts his hands on you, take him off the planet. Take him off the planet. It's not supporting a particular candidate. 
and it's not political speech. I don't believe that the DAs have been made to take off DA buttons. I don't believe that marshals have been made to stop wearing the black bands when, some, when there's been a death. Wear it in the hallways, wear it in front of the courthouse, demonstrate, protest, use your voice, but that's not what's supposed to occur in the courtroom. When we're not here on a petition about a movement or a protest or anything like that, we're here to dispense justice on a criminal calendar of cases. And, and that's why I think it's inappropriate. And if other judges think it's okay to have that in the courtrooms, I respect that. That's their decision to make. But as I said, I think you know what, that's not the purpose of coming into court. And I think Erica would admit, when we were talking this morning in chamber, she was saying, well, I think it is appropriate here because this is where there is disparate treatment of African Americans and harsher penalties on African Americans. I mean, that's, it, it, it's making it a political statement that I wear this in protest of how the court is treating minority defendants. Um, and that's not what this is about. I'd ask for my cases to be reassigned from you because I am not comfortable giving my case to someone else to handle, and I'm also not comfortable abridging my free speech. Uh, I'm not going to refuse off my cases. Under the judicial canons, I've got an obligation to hear my cases. I don't have any conflict with you. I'm just asking you the same thing as I would ask somebody that's inappropriate to wear in court. you got to put something else on. Um, those clothing items are inappropriate, or you can't wear your hat in court. I mean, this, this is no different than those types of things. I'm just asking you to conform to the courtroom's decorum. Um, it's not a conflict with you or your clients or anything. So, no, I'm not going to recuse off cases that I'm obligated to hear to get assigned. Tonight, Nine investigates the Ku Klux Klan, the notorious group associated with white supremacist views and violence against minorities. Channel 9's Jeff Deal spoke with the man who oversees the Florida chapter of the Loyal White Knights of the KKK. He tracked its leader down after we noticed the hate group is ramping up its recruitment efforts in Central Florida. Flaming crosses, flowing white robes and hoods, these are the unmistakable symbols of the Ku Klux Klan. The KKK is the white supremacist group known for its extreme hate and acts of violence against black people in the last two centuries, including the 1951 murders of early civil rights leaders Harry and Harriet Moore in MIMS. I remember saying, I don't believe my daddy is dead. Evangeline Moore was 21 years old. She was on a train from Washington, D.C. to visit her parents when on Christmas night a bomb went off in her parents' home. They murdered my parents. And it was done because of hatred. So what has happened to the Klan? In recent months, flyers started popping up across Central Florida recruiting for the loyal white knights of the KKK. The flyers even showed up at the Harry T. Moore home site around the anniversary of the Moore murders. What you've seen is uh, just the tip of the iceberg right now. The Grand Dragon, who oversees the Florida chapter and a newer member dressed in the white hood, agreed to sit down with us, faces covered. Why do you want your face covered here? Uh, because I care about my job. They claim to be part of an invisible empire. We have police officers, paramedics, judges, you know, they're everywhere. And they say they're 1,000 members strong and growing. Charleston shooting suspect Dylan Storm Roof got a free meal from police on his way to jail. They went to Burger King. After about 16 hours on the run, the admitted mass murderer complained to cops arresting him in Shelby, North Carolina, that he was hungry, so police got him food from the nearby fast food joint, according to an account of his arrest in the Charlotte Observer. He gets his Social Security every year indicating The that earnings thing. He gets his earnings thing. Okay. He gets it. He gets it every year. So she asked for it. Why didn't he provide it? He doesn't have it. He doesn't? He threw it away? I would presume he did. Oh, come on. If you say he got it, Judge, I don't know. Don't you get it? No, I don't get it. You I don't get it, Judge. I get it. I don't get it. You get it? You get it? Everybody get gets it. it. Everybody gets it. I must be the one that doesn't win. <laughs> Social Security sends it to your home. They do. Every year. They sent it to my home four years ago. I haven't received it in the last three. Well, when did you become an illegal alien? <laughs> Judge comes to you. Judge, I am going to, that was a totally inappropriate comment. I didn't mean it. Uh, I'm Judge, only, uh, listen to me. 